this is our virtual open event. Um, what we're planning to do probably in the next 30 minutes or so is to introduce you to Catherine and to Jennifer Marshall. Catherine's our head of education. Jen is um, head of residential services of our children's homes. Talk you through what we offer. Um, we've got some photos just to show you what, what we have on site. So if you were visiting, you would see it, but we'll show you on photo and then give some examples of how we make a difference to the young people that, that we support at the school and in, in children's homes. We've got a short film to show and then answer any questions that you may have. Perfect. So over to you, Catherine and Jen. Uh, hello, I'm Catherine Clifford, as Claire said. I'm the head of education here. Um, I've been head of education at McIntyre School for about six years now in different roles. And prior to that, I was with McIntyre's FE provision, which supports young people with learning disabilities who are attending colleges in around the country. And hello, I'm Jen Marshall and I, as Claire said, I head up the, the Children's Homes for McIntyre. Worked for McIntyre for nearly 10 years now. Um, started as kind of a support worker and all the way through to managing the managers in the Children's Homes. Uh, very, very lucky. Uh, yeah, that's me. Brilliant, thank you both. So, um, the, the, we just thought we'd include a, a photo of the school for anyone who doesn't know it. Um, so, and we're presenting this for, for people who are physically with us on the call today, as well as those who haven't been able to make it. Um, so the school is based in a village called Wingrave, which is between Aylesbury and Leighton Buzzard. Really lovely rural site, as you can see. Um, and then we're, um, Catherine and Jen now are just going to talk through a little bit more about what we offer for both our education and our children's homes. So over to you, Catherine. Okay, so welcome to McIntyre School. Uh, McIntyre School is a special school with children's homes for children and young people with severe learning disabilities and complex needs aged 10 to 19. Um, we're currently established for 34 students. That's 24 residential and 10 day students. Our core practice here includes strategies supportive and inclusive of autism, as almost all of the young people here have an autism diagnosis. So our curriculum. We developed our curriculum around the Equals Semi-Formals curriculum. Um, Equals designed this specifically for SLD students. And when we were looking for a base for ours, um, it was a really good match. It covers a wide range of functional skills that students can take with them into their adult lives. So you can see the different curricular areas that we offer on the slide here. Um, alongside that, we offer further layers of formal and informal learning, um, which is adapted according to individual needs. And it's to accommodate the spiky profiles of the young people that we have here. So this curriculum links closely to the outcomes listed in the EHCPs. So if you look at this next slide, um, it shows the different areas of the EHCPs at the top there, and then our curriculum subject areas and how that maps across. Uh, and it was really important to us as a school where every single child has an EHCP, um, where these areas are critical part, you know, the basis of their learning that we made sure that our curriculum mapped and covered those areas in depth. Um, so our curriculum also covers work-related learning skills. Uh, in the lower school, it's more about developing those skills in different contexts and starting to get experience of work. And then in the upper school, every young person has a work experience programme, depending on their needs, so it could be on-site or off-site, um, different levels of challenge depending on, on where it fits best for them and that work experience program is accredited so all of our post-16 students will leave with an accredited qualification relating to their work-related learning skills. Our curriculum looks at developing independence in a whole range of areas, all aspects of life but particularly in areas such as shopping, cooking, travel, independent living skills, and those personal care skills which are relevant to them. We look at self-determination um, and being able to make choice. 
and experiencing different environments and settings. And that's really key for our young people is not just to be learning skills in the classroom, but being able to apply and generalize those skills to their home life and to the world around them and to be able to take them confidently into their new lives. So learning here is accredited through ASDAN. Um, this provides different levels of, accom of accreditation, which our young people are working towards right from when they first start. So for 19 to 13 year olds, they would be working on the New Horizons programme. And it all maps really closely with our curriculum. It is designed for our sort of learner group. And the New Horizon programme has five modules. It covers things like personal skills, travel, uh, challenge, activities at different levels, different types. And young people can either achieve a silver award where they complete one or more module or a gold award where they complete all of them. Once they get through to um, 14 to 16 year olds, we're looking at their transition onwards, their upper school transition. So this is transition challenge that they work towards. There are two levels for this. There's the sensory pathway or there's introduction and progression. And again, each module will be certified, but if they achieve all five modules, they would get a gold award with that. And then once they go into the sixth form, um, the sixth form is more about generalizing the skills they've developed, focusing in on the areas of interest from the range of experiences they've had in the lower school and taking that learning forward and generalizing it in the community. So they'd be working on the Towards Independence program, which offers 70 different modules for them to choose from. Now, there are some modules that all of our young people would do. So there is a modules around communication and independent living skills. And then from their modules would be selected with the young people, depending on what is relevant and motivating and of interest to them. So the curriculum is adapted depending on students' individual needs and the provision that's stated in their ILP. And it includes the use of a number of approaches throughout the school. So that's things like structured teaching, um, the use of attention autism sessions, the use of social stories, intensive interactions, sensory integration programs. Um, and we're, we work a total communication approach. So that's using things like symbol exchange, Makaton, um, using visuals and objects to support communication. Um, therapy is a major part of our offer and supports and enables students to be able to engage and access the broad curriculum. It includes speech and language therapy, occupational therapy and positive behaviour support specialists, as well as consultant psychiatric input. Some young people would also have access to other forms of therapy, such as music therapy or complementary massage therapy. The psychiatric input is to support young people with behaviour related anxieties and other associated difficulties related to their learning disability or autism diagnoses. We're not an SEMH school. So our multidisciplinary approach means that health and therapy, residential and education colleagues all work collaboratively. And that's looking at things like identifying learning priorities, um, identifying where progress is being made throughout the waking day, um, or to address areas of difficulty where we would come together as a team around the child then to look at how we can adapt the approach and what we could do differently. Um, Later on, you'll see some photographs of some of the facilities that we have across the site. We try to make effective use of our site for learning. And this includes within the children's homes, both during the school day and out, outside of the school hours, and making use of the community around us. So if I hand over to Jen, she'll tell you a little bit more about the children's homes. Thank you, Catherine. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay. Hello. Hello again. Oh, Claire, you've clicked one forward. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, just to say uh, this, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the children's homes and what we do. 
Um, so the photo you can see in front of you is our Jenkins Court Children's Home, and that's on the site of McIntyre School. So that consists of four houses um, with up to five bedrooms between three and five in each of the homes. Um, and they have two bathrooms, a lounge dining area, an activity room, a second lounge, and I mean lots of space in a back garden with a sunken trampoline. Uh, each of the homes is very, very individualised to the young people, so their bedrooms would would make sense to them but the homes they look very very different on the inside it is it is really about how how we match the young person who who they are Hi. you can go on to the next slide Claire that's absolutely fine um who they are and making sure that the environment really matches their needs um we also have um and I I manage the manager over there an off-site children's home uh hillside in Leighton Buzzard and all of those children attend McIntyre school as Catherine said um that home is slightly different it's a kind of newer build with ensuite bathrooms for the young people that has a large lounge dining area kitchen and a very large back garden with trampoline and swing uh, again the environment very much matches the young people that are there it's an ever-changing environment based on the young people that are living there and how uh, the bedrooms are very much catered to the young person's needs. We work collaboratively with families and anybody involved in that child's life to make sure that the bedroom is as individualised as it can be before the young person moves into us. Um, so just a little bit about what we do in the children's homes. I mean, Catherine talks a lot about um, the kind of overlap around therapy and integration, but, um, what we do is is deliver a life that makes sense to young people so I mean that sounds like a McIntyre overall saying but it absolutely is we look at that young person's needs and we match our care and support in order to support that child to progress and prepare them as far as possible for adulthood and so we provide care and support for children and young people uh, for 52 weeks of the year um, as I said, very person centred. Each child has um, a positive, positive placement plan that identifies all of their individual needs, supports staff to understand them and be able to support them again in a way that makes sense to them. Uh, the environment, as I said, set up very much individualised. You can see some of the facilities just around site, a very large kitchen with two sides on both of the kitchen. So young people that may struggle to keep themselves safe around cookers and things, they can still have access to cooking or peeling or being involved in some kind of way. Um, we we access the community a lot within the children's home um, as far as possible based on the young person's needs but um making sure that that the learning is as Catherine said generalized so what i may learn in the home or out the front of the home or uh, any interactions that I learn or communication that we can transfer that out into the community. Can I learn to talk to the shopkeeper or exchange money in order to understand that paying for items? Um, Catherine talked a bit about our positive behaviour support and it really underpins everything that we do. So we do have two on-site uh, positive behaviour support coaches that come into the homes as well as the school and we do the team around the child to make sure that we can really understand the function of the behaviour. Um, there are, we are a no sanction service, so making sure that we are really clear around the function of that behaviour, we see it as communication. Um, and then try and match kind of that function in order to hopefully reduce the levels of behaviour. Um, I think that generally gives an overview of what we do. <laughs> Thank you. Great. Thank you. So if I move on uh, to facilities. So we've just set up a few photos here just to show some of the variety. Uh, Catherine and Jane, feel free to chip in if you'd like to say anything. Otherwise, I'll, I'll just keep hitting next for a few of these slides. Catherine, this is a good one for you, PE. <laughs> so you can see that there are a number of physical activities involved here and adventurous activities. Um, this is our ball, ball yeah. <laughs> uh, we have within our gym, we have the climbing wall and the exercise equipment. This is our new cafe, which has been recently redeveloped 
It's got the eating area on one side where day students would have meals, but it's also a space for families to yeah. share with the young people. And then there's a student kitchen as well as a staff kitchen. So that means that students have got access to cooking facilities, particularly the day students. Residential students would do a lot of their learning in the houses. Oh, I mean, you should talk about this, Catherine. Our this is our new outdoor <laughs> learning area, also redevelopment, redeveloped. We have an outdoor classroom, um, a sensory trail area, um, planters where we've got horticultural activities going on um, and uh, other sensory activities around there. And it's definitely a place where our outdoor learning part of the curriculum can take place, particularly for those young people who might find it difficult to take that learning off-site to other areas like the local woods and, um, and outdoor parks. And what I would say just on the back of that is we also use that in the evenings and the weekends with the young people in the children's home. So again, to create an outdoor space for learning. This is our therapy zone. You can see our occupational therapist running some sessions in there with some of the young people. Um, a range of different types of activities the occupational therapist would run depending on the provision in the EHCP and um, the targets he's working towards from his OT plans. And our occupational therapist also upskills all of our staff. Uh, sorry, Claire. Um, so really, it, it is a uh, team around the child. So each of our staff would understand that child's therapy plan and ensure that that is integrated throughout their daily life and not just kind of individual sessions from our occupational therapist. Mm. This is... Oh, sorry, we're... <laughs> a lot of learning takes place off site. Um, it's really important for our young people to be learning in context in a functional way that is meaningful for them. So, yes, they're developing the independent skills, but if they're learning about money, then they do that by handling real money in a real context. So, by going shopping, by making an exchange at the swimming pool or the gym, or indeed at the cinema, or going bowling in their leisure activities too. And it's all. all... Uh, it's always hugely motivating if they get a snack and things at the end. So um, the learning comes naturally. And in this picture, the young lady is um, buying the ingredients for a cooking activity that she was going to do later on. So she's actually prepared her visual list to be able to follow too. And the next slide, um, this is a young person accessing our local library. Um, we think it's hugely important both within the school and within the children's home to engage where possible within our community, build those relationships so that people in and around our young people know who they are and are able to communicate with them. And this photo comes from PROM. So every year we have our leavers PROM um, an opportunity for the young people with their families. So this is a families event and um, they get to choose to invite their families, some of their staff from across the, the school and the houses to join them to celebrate their achievements through their time at McIntyre School. An opportunity to dress up, to arrive in style, to have a formal dinner with um, disco afterwards. And it's a phenomenal event. You just see the pride in the young people's faces. It's fantastic, really lovely. Okay, so we're gonna go on to talk about some individual young people that have uh, joined us and the difference that we feel that we can make to young people. So just sharing a story, uh, this young lady is called Elisha. Um, and I mean, she's absolutely phenomenal, but just a little bit about her story. So she was at home. She wasn't accessing any education, had actually not left the home for nearly two years. Um, she was completely nocturnal. Um, she up all night and asleep all day. Uh, her independent skills were very, very minimal. Her mum had done a fantastic job, but um, Elisha really, I mean, she'd become far too big for that environment. And mum, it was unsafe for mum to access the community with her. And she wasn't accessing any form of education. So this young lady moved to us nearly 18 months ago now. Um, and what we've done is what we say we're going to do and put a whole team in and around Elisha. 
to make sure that we really understand what makes sense for her. So looking at her therapy input, looking at her communication needs, looking at what motivates her and really just build those relationships. One of the main difference that we've made to Elisha is intensive interaction. So her really understanding the fundamentals of communication for her, that mirroring what she does and being able to come down to a level where she is and engage with her. And just with that, the, the ability to build relationships with her, Elisha now baths twice a day. She goes to bed at night. She is using uh, lots of different forms of communication, be that objects of reference, independence, because she'll go and get it herself, uh, pictures, um, but, but intensive interaction still remains a huge part of her life. Um, she, I mean, she's just come on so, so far. You can see her here out for a walk. You can see her accessing the supermarket and choosing her own items. You can see her engaging in messy play. She has built huge relationships, her independence. She will go and get herself a drink. She will be involved in making her dinner. She will access the school building. She, she will go out. She will ask to go out um, at just, yeah, I... I think the story tells itself absolutely phenomenal. And that really is down to the commitment of our staff, the understanding, the therapy input, and us just working around, well, working to understand what makes sense to her and making sure that we put that in place. We have um, developed a huge relationship with her family so that they're able to now support, see her in the community. So they're just, yeah, really fantastic outcomes for her. And our next story from the children's home. Uh, this, this is a, a young man that moved to us nearly two years ago now. Um, he, he has autism and significant learning disability. Uh, again, had very, very limited communication. Uh, wasn't accessing school, spent a long time just sat in his bed on his iPad at home had a hugely loving family, but they'd got to the, the end of where they felt they were able to just bring carers in and support him. He wasn't accessing anything. He moved to us and he had a very tricky time to start with. He, he moved to us in the smaller home of the four on site here, um, moved in with two other peers. Um, and really, he did have a very tricky time in the beginning. He, he was really struggling to communicate his needs. And again, we just got down to his level. We were able to build that strong trust and relationship. I mean, it's a huge trauma for any young person moving to us. And we understand that coming into residential care and leaving your family full time is, is really difficult. But as I say, we work so closely with families to really ensure that we understand their needs. We're able to pick up on their communication or their nonverbal communication in order to meet their needs as quickly as possible, in order to settle them and make them feel safe. Uh, Charlie had had a huge trauma around personal care and hadn't bathed at home for nearly four years. Um, and since being with us in the last six months, has been able to access and really, really enjoyed having personal care, going into the bath, playing with bubbles and ducks and fishes. Um, and that's all been around kind of the the support, um, consistent staffing, making sure that we work really closely with our OT and speech and language therapist. He has a communication book where he's able to tell us that no, I don't want to bath or yes, I do. Uh, giving him lots of time and reassurance around running taps and just being in the bathroom. Um, he was also doubly incontinent. He has now learned to use the toilet, which is just huge progression for him. He really, really struggled because, again, he was in a very small enclosed environment, wasn't accessing the community, wasn't able to build any external relationships to access the school building in the very beginning. So education, as Catherine said, came to him. We got to know him in the children's home. You were able to build those really trusted relationships. And now he accesses school every single day and you just hear him chuckling as he runs around the corridors. Um, He's, he's just a delightful young man. He's been able to access so, so much museums, shops, uh, the seaside. And when he first came, we were lucky if he even got on a vehicle. So just, again, huge, huge positive outcomes for him. Thank you, Jen. So Catherine, 
Yeah. So this young lady is a day student. She was just over a year ago. She's in year 11 now. Um, when she was in her last placement, she had struggled significantly with her anxiety around other people, around their busyness, around their noise, around being in the same space. And eventually her school placement broke down because her anxiety levels were so high and her distress was so high that she was really struggling at school. Then she started refusing to come to school um, and then she was refusing to use the transport and eventually she became stuck at home and wasn't accessing education at all. By the time she was referred to us, she'd been out of education for a prolonged period um, and was rarely able to leave the house. Occasionally, her mother would be able to get her out for a walk to the nearby park, which is literally on the corner from their house. Um, but that wasn't that frequent. She's a very quiet young lady who cried a lot um, when we met her. Um, she did have a little bit of education. She had some outreach services coming into her house for a couple of hours twice a week. Um, and over the time, she'd managed to build up a bit of a relationship there so that she was able to do short activities with them. But sometimes she just couldn't cope even with that and would run and hide in her bedroom or even hiding in cupboards. Um, for her, the transition was really, really important. And we made a very long, slow transition, taking it at her pace. So we started off by visiting her in her home alongside the outreach workers, um, just so that she could get used to this new face in her environment. Um, then slowly we added in a little bit another morning when we'd be alongside her mother so that she could still get used to us, but without the outreach workers there. Then we took over from the outreach workers to do their morning and we managed to go outside the house a little bit. We managed to go to the park. Um, she really enjoyed the park and she formed good relationships. We kept the number of people that she was working to, to a small group, just three to start with, to build the relationships. And eventually she got on a bus and went for a drive with us. We went for a drive a few times and eventually one day the drive happened to take her to a lovely swing, which was in our school grounds. She came and played on the swing for a few mornings and then curiosity took over and she looked a bit further around the grounds. Then she peeked into a classroom and one day she came into a classroom and we built it from there. So to start with, we were picking her up from, from home and bringing her in and she was spending as long as she could manage in the school grounds, sometimes in the classroom, until she had had enough and then she would go home. We've come such a long way since those days. Um, again, like Jen was saying, with the other young people that we've had here, it is totally a multidisciplinary approach. And for a day student, that involves our team working closely with the family too, so that whatever we're putting in place in school we try and support them to be able to do that at home as well. Um, whether that be around the communication or around meeting sensory needs or around an approach that we're doing to support with anxiety related behaviours. Now this young lady, as you can see in some of these pictures here, um, she is happy in her classroom with some quite bubbly young people. Um, and as you can see, she's re reaching off the table to say good morning to one of her friends there. She is going out and about in the community, shopping to the <coughs> cafe. Um, she's enjoying all areas of the school grounds. She quite likes seeing other people around and about. You know, she, she'll keep to one side and watch from a distance to try and feel safe because she is anxious. But um, her, relation, her ability to be able to manage other people in her space to enjoy being around other people and to enjoy accessing other facilities has been huge. And it's not been just in school, um, it's at home as well. And mum has been telling us about what they've been doing outside of school. They've been to the seaside for the day. They use public transport. They go shopping together. They go to the cafe together. They visit family and friends. And also when they're at home, they have quiet, relaxed family time. So that bottom right hand picture is the young lady painting her mum's nails. 
just sharing some, some good quality time there. One of the other things that helped make this a success was to be able to support the family in accessing the health care that she needed too. So CAMS had not been able to be involved with her because they hadn't been able to visit her at home because her anxiety was so high that she couldn't work with them on that. Um, so we were able to support the family to access CAMS as well so that they could review her provision from that point of view. And that's been really beneficial for her. So now, as you can see, she's a happy, engaged lady who is progressing phenomenally with her learning. Um, and starting to attempt verbal communication too, uh, and very excited about copying your mouth shapes and the words that you, you make. And again, as Jen said before, she's a huge fan of intensive interactions too, a way of being really engaged um, and interactive with a member of staff and, and, and linked at a very quite intimate level yeah. in that communication role. On to the other one. Yeah, thank you. So this young lady has been with us since um, 2017. When I was looking back, I couldn't believe that it's been that long. And she's come such a long way. She's in year 12 now. Um, when she came to us, again, as a day student, uh, she was living at home um, and attending a day school. She had no verbal communication really and there were regular behaviors which had disrupted her placement um, at school and were making things difficult at home. She was a confused and anxious young lady without the strategies in place that she needed to support her. Whilst being here with the approaches and strategies that we use for young people with autism, she has blossomed. Um, schedules are really important to her. She needs to know what's happening um, now, when things are going to be happening in the future. She has a really good memory for when things are supposed to be and is quite reliant on routine. But with the use of social stories, she can be prepared for change and enjoy it. So examples of that is, I think one of the hugest things was her family being able to take an overseas holiday with her. There was an enormous amount of input went in at school, um, liaising with the family to prepare her for that with social stories, um, with looking at different visuals, things that the family could use to prepare her and things that we could use at school to prepare her. She's also recently been on a five-day Duke of Edinburgh residential trip to, to Devon um, and again, she needed preparation for the change involved with that, um, but was able to take that in her stride and was it was a huge success for her. She has become an exceptionally independent young lady, particularly in the world of life skills, um, meal preparation, cooking, cleaning. Um, but in every aspect of her life, she wants to be able to be independent. Um, and she has also learnt to ask for help when she needs it. And then the other area where she's made huge progress is with her communication. Um, and she has not only using visuals um, and signing to support her communication, but her verbal communication has come on hugely. Um, and that is now her main form of communication, which she uses to not just to express wants and needs, but to give her opinions, to make comments on things around her, to share what she's liked. And even on one occasion that we witnessed just recently, to reassure herself. So at the top of a, a climbing wall, ready to start the abseil when she was feeling rather anxious, she was telling herself to calm and using her strategies herself independently to regulate herself in order to be able to achieve the activity, which she did, and then she was absolutely delighted and celebrated her success. So another another success story. Thank you. Just move on to the next slide. Oh, yes, that one. 
So I referred to the Duke of Edinburgh Award there, there when I was talking about that last young person. Um, we are a Duke of Edinburgh centre and the Duke of Edinburgh scheme is embedded in our curriculum. We, when you look at the four aspects of the Duke of Edinburgh Award, it's around developing skills, it's around physical activity, volunteering, and then the expedition. Well, those first three are what our curriculum is about. So the Duke of Edinburgh provides that extra depth to our curriculum, an extra layer of accreditation, and a phenomenal experience for all of our young people. So young people in the school are enrolled on it at a time which is appropriate for them. So some of them might be enrolled in it in year 10 and 11, but by the time they reach the sixth form, all young people are enrolled on the scheme and all young people work to it at a level that they can. So for some of them, that might just be certification in certain areas. For some of them, it's achieving the bronze award in its entirety. And this year, for the first time, we have three young people working on the gold award, which is huge. Um, so these photographs here are from one of our young people on the recent residential trip for her Duke of Edinburgh award, with the comment there that her mother has, has sent, um, who is overwhelmed by what her daughter has achieved through this Duke of Edinburgh award scheme. Great, thank you, Catherine. Um, I think that next we thought we would show the film, but I'm gonna suggest that we don't do that um, because I'm concerned about my internet working really efficiently. So rather than do that, we'll, we'll attach the link to the film to those that couldn't make it today. Um, so can we just move on to any questions? Um, I know we've had a couple of questions through um, so you can either use the chat or, um, or ask a question. One of the questions that, that I know we had already was around uh, Ofsted and compliance. So from the school perspective, we were last inspected by Ofsted in January 2020. Uh, we were graded good overall and outstanding in personal development. Um, we work with a school improvement partner to provide, as all schools do, to provide that extra layer of scrutiny and support to that challenging friend um, to make sure that we're constantly working to develop our practice. Great, thank you. Um, the question here about where, where do most of the young students go after they finish at the school and children's homes? Claire, I don't know if you want me to just answer around the children's homes. For oh, I'm sorry for compliance. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Yeah, just to say, so the children's home, uh, Jenkins Court, part of McIntyre School, was last inspected in June 2021. And uh, we also got good. And Hillside was inspected in May 2021 and got good overall. Great, thank you. So, so sorry, then the question about where, where do the young people go when they finish with us? I mean, ultimately, I think that's from you, Natasha, but ultimately when children leave us, we have a what we call a transition facilitator on site. She works really, really closely with, again, the whole team. So education, uh, residential and the therapy teams in order to sort of make a pathway for them. Works closely with the local authorities around what is available in the local area or what 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 there is. Um, so it is very individualised. Usually they move on to a kind of a supported living or a residential college, um, hopefully into the community. Not many children go back to parents, which is what a, a question that we often get asked. From the point of view of day students, um, some of them will go on to colleges um, and some of them will go home um, uh, with a social care package to support the families. Um, and in some instances, so for instance, one of our day student leavers this year, we're looking, his family are ready for him to move on to being an, a young adult. So they're looking at a supported living placement for him. Um, and when we work, as Jen was saying about the transition facilitator, once the placement has been finalized um, and the transition planning takes place, what we would look at particularly, especially for young people who are more local to the school, is 
building their last part of their education here around their new environment. So we would be looking at um, accessing shops in the area where they're going to be looking at the facilities in the other area, building up some familiarization with that new area and also working with staff from their new provision for them to come and work alongside us for us to be able to visit with them as appropriate. But as Jen said, it's all very much personalized to the individual depending on what works best for them and what best meets their needs. And in consultation, obviously with the families as well, because the families play a huge part in everything we do here. Thank you. Um, so thinking of family, um, working with families, family engagement, when children are, are living in the residential homes, Jen, how does that work in terms of visits from family or visits home? I mean, we, we offer only a 52 week package now, but that really doesn't mean anything like they have to be here all year round. We work really, really closely with families on lots of different things, be that their support and care, but also just around how we can rebuild any relationships um, and what works best for them too. I mean, it completely is an open door policy. So parents and carers and friends can come and visit. We can support off-site community acti activities with them or, and even where, where appropriate support young people to go back home. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it really is both Jenkins Court and Hillside is open door working very closely with families where appropriate. Thank you. And you've you just touched on it there. So when children aren't at the school, what, what other activities do, do they do out of school hours? I mean, loads and loads, Claire, if I'm honest, but um, we have what we call a, an extended curriculum coordinator and she coordinates lots of kind of ideas and activities. Um, really, lots of that is related to learning. So be that an after school youth club, be that the trampoline session, the climbing wall, looking at kind of how we can support communication in that um, or accessing the community nightclubs, discos for under 18s where not only do they get the socialization so everything really relates back to learning and outcomes but having a really great time the young people here access all sorts and individualized to them kind of um cinemas bowlings ice skating trampoline parks the shops woods parks um a life that makes sense to them in whatever they choose is what we do yeah okay great With is there anything else, Jen and Catherine, that, that you haven't covered that, that you meant to say at any point earlier on? Yeah. I, th I think I've covered the questions that, that we'd had. I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I, I think an overview. Okay, so if we just draw this to a close, um, I'm just going to show, for the sake of this kind of recording, I'm just going to show our kind of final screen about more information and how to reach both of you. Um, so we have a general email address for, for McIntyre School, which is wingrave at McIntyreCharity.org. The uh, phone number's there and our website. And Jen and Marshall always, Jen and, and Catherine, I'm sorry, always welcome visits from anyone that might like that. Absolutely.